Because if you think that you can just go out and get any white t-shirt or any white button-up, that basics are just basics, then try to tell me that these are the same t-shirts and these are the same trousers. They're both basics, but as you can see, they have very different fits, which is going to give you a completely different look and vibe. Also, what you don't see, at least when you're shopping online, is that the quality of these items are drastically different, which also determines the price point. Hey guys and welcome to a wardrobe essentials video. We're gonna talk all about basics so that you can build a solid foundation and then branch out from there. And this is not gonna be your typical get a white t-shirt kind of video although we are going to talk about white t-shirts. This is going to be more of a comprehensive guide on how to choose the right basics for you and your personal style. How to pick a flattering fit and choose good quality depending on your budget. But before we get into the fit and the quality, you need to curate your own list of basics. As you probably already know, basics are the building blocks to any functional wardrobe and any stylish outfit and I stand by that. You can call me basic all you want, but this is how you're going to build a timeless, long-lasting wardrobe. But depending on your preferred style or aesthetic, you're not going to have the same basics as just any other person. For example, last year everybody and their grandmother was wearing this striped sweater, especially with the rise of the old money and quite luxury aesthetics. And even though it's more of a trendy silhouette, I would still consider this a basic or maybe more of an elevated basic. Because striped sweaters in general isn't something new to capsule wardrobes, it's also in a neutral color and stripes as a pattern is considered timeless. It's kind of ironic how weak I am to marketing when I even studied psychology of marketing and work with what I do. But anyway, I thought that I needed this sweater. And when I went to the store to try it on, I pretty much instantly realized that it did not look flattering on me at all. And I also realized that I'm not really a fan of stripe patterns. I don't even think I really own anything with stripes. So the point is that when you look for basics, you don't have to follow what everyone else is doing. And I don't think you should. In this case, this was not an essential basics for me, even though every Every curated capsule wardrobe on Pinterest was trying to tell me that it was, but it might be for another person. Of course, there are some basics that are just so basic that if you find the perfect fit, it would just be stupid not to have. I mean, everybody's gonna need a t-shirt, tank top, jeans, and trousers. I would call these universal basics that are so basic that they just work with any style. But then we have these elevated basics that work to build out the foundation of your wardrobe, which I think is a good idea to think twice about. And curate a list that suits and flatters your style. When you have figured out what basics you want, maybe you have to look for inspiration online or go to different stores, it's time to go out and try things on to see what fits your preferred style, body shape, and proportions. This is where you can consider your horizontal and vertical lines to figure out your body shape and proportions so that you can find what will look most flattering on you. This is, in my opinion, not an exact science, so you won't need exact measurements, and I personally don't like to get nitpicky about things. I like of it when fashion is simple and easy so I like to find easy solutions for everybody to be able to do at home. So the only two things that you really need to worry about are your horizontal lines which are your shoulder, waist and hip ratio and then your vertical lines which are your torso and leg ratio. Make your own judgment by wearing a solid color and looking in the mirror and remember that this has nothing to do with height or weight. Just look at what features are more prominent than others and use charts like these to determine what your body proportions are. Then you can use Use this to your advantage by, for example, balancing out your torso with high-waisted pants if you have a longer torso compared to your legs. And then of course do the opposite if you have a shorter torso and longer legs. There's so much information out there, so with a simple Google search you can find endless of tips on how to dress your body proportions and your body shape in the best and most flattering way. You can find what fit you should get, what length, even what type of jean styles and necklines that will look the best on you. And when you pay attention you will find that there are so many different styles of basic basic tops and bottoms that you can choose from. So don't just settle for the standard first one that you find, really dig deep and try to find your best fit. However, maybe you don't want to dress for your proportions and maybe you're more interested in dressing for your preferred style. So if you have a really prominent personal style and you dress more edgy, maybe you like to wear something more oversized versus somebody who dresses more old money. But no matter which method you use, decide if you want more fitted basics, more relaxed or more oversized basics. And of course you can have multiple versions of things, but I would never buy anything I'm not sure about. Really the best way to find your perfect fit is to just go out there and try different things on to see how you like them. And remember that you can be different sizes in different stores, so don't get locked in on just one size and be open-minded to try 
all the different sizes. The next step to shopping the right basics is figuring out what neutral suit you the best and what you gravitate towards. The five basic neutral colors are black, white, gray, tan, and brown. Some people even count navy as one of the neutral colors, which is very versatile and can be combined very easily, which is the main criteria for a neutral. Neutrals are supposed to go with any other item in your closet, no matter what color or style. So that's why I think they're really essential to have in your closet. But as you can see, there are tons of different shades of neutrals. And although you don't always have to stick to the same one, it is good to know what suits you the best and what you like the best. And the reason why I think it's important to consider is because when I want to buy multiple styles of a basic, let's say a tank top, I know I'm much more likely to wear it in black than in white because I just like black better. And it can just be as simple as that because even though they're both equally important neutrals, you should know what you gravitate towards so that you can get the most wear out of your basics. Especially if you're trying out something new, always go with your safe option first to see how often you wear it before you go and buy it in multiple colors. And I know what you're thinking, maybe you don't want a closet that's just all black like mine. It might feel like that, but it's really not going to be because as I said, the basics are just the foundation of your wardrobe, which you then are going to go and pair with other things in your wardrobe that could be more personality pieces in different colors and in different patterns. Now we've probably come to the trickiest part of shopping your basics, which I'm going to be honest with you, sometimes gives me a headache. There's just so much information out there and unless you go out of your way and really do your research, there is no way for you to know all of these things, which unfortunately Unfortunately, is how brands can get away with taking shortcuts because we're just not educated enough as consumers. And before you get overwhelmed, just know that you don't have to know everything right away. I'm just gonna go over the basics. I really need to stop saying basic in every single sentence. Let me rephrase. I'm gonna take it slow and get you guys familiar with how you can spot quality pieces. But before we get into it, I want to get the myth that expensive automatically equals higher quality out of the way because there are definitely instances where more expensive items are just expensive because of the brand's perception and marketing and not because of the quality of their clothes. I personally don't feel like there are any go-to brands that I can recommend that you can always trust are good quality. Every brand has its strengths and weaknesses and some things are going to be a hit and some things are going to be a miss and this is just my experience with most brands anyways. That's why I rather look at the individual items and make a judgment based on that particular item rather than the brand as a whole. So when I'm talking about quality in this context, I'm referring to what the item is made out of and if it's durable and long lasting. You can find quality items in almost any budget and you should look for clothing items that have a high composition of natural materials like wool, cotton, linen, cashmere, or silk, for example, and try to avoid synthetic fibers like polyester and acrylic. If you're looking at it from a sustainable standpoint, yes, you should only buy clothing items that are made of 100% natural materials. From a quality standpoint, all fabrics have their advantages and disadvantages, even synthetic ones. Also, just because an item has a high content of natural fibers alone doesn't necessarily mean that that piece of clothing is of high quality overall. Because not all fabrics are made equal and the industry just wants to make it as difficult as possible can't you tell? So even if it states that it is the same material, especially with natural fibers like cotton, for example, a 100% cotton t-shirt can nowadays be made really cheaply and poorly. That's why it's also important that you make your own overall assessment of the item by looking at the construction of the clothing, feel to make sure it's soft, durable, or thick, depending on what the material is, and make sure that the thread work is secure and that there are no loose threads and minimal peeling. Now, don't get discouraged just because I said that there are bad quality cotton items out there. Cotton is definitely something you can find on a budget because it's both durable and affordable. Just make sure to check the quality of everything else too. If you're shopping on the budget side, natural fibers and synthetic blends can still be good quality if most of the material is natural. Depending on the item and what it's going to be used for, there are different materials, pure or blended, that are going to be more suitable than others. For example, cotton, linen, and silk are much more likely to to wrinkle than polyester and nylon. Also, if you, for example, want a more stretchy t-shirt, you're gonna be much more satisfied with a cotton blend that also has elastane in it, also known as spandex or lycra. The same thing goes when you shop for denim, although I would recommend going for 100% cotton for a true denim look that will last longer. If you like a little bit of stretch, you can also go for jeans that have 95% cotton and 5% spandex. The easiest way to recognize quality if you don't want to do a ton of research is to just go 
and experience it yourself in person. Go to a high-end store and try on their clothing and look what their clothing items are made out of. Get familiar with the different fabric compositions and how it feels. Then go to a less expensive store and do the same thing. Try to compare similar items and their differences. Clothes are super tactile so by going and feeling higher quality clothing yourself and trying them on will make you be able to recognize those same qualities in the future. And then you can make your own judgment on what you want to spend your money on even with limited knowledge. I really hope that this was helpful. Until next time, check out my channel and my socials for more fashion tips. Bye!